So yesterday we have discussed about mirrors. Plane mirrors. Mirrors are divided into two types, plane mirrors and spherical mirrors. First of all, I just I'll just mute you all. Yeah, okay. So mirrors are two types, plane mirrors and spherical mirrors. Plane mirror is a mirror that has a perfectly flat surface and a spherical mirror has a curved reflecting surface. Spherical mirrors are of two types depending on the reflecting surface, convex mirror and concave mirror. So the spherical mirrors are two types children, concave mirror and convex mirror. Convex mirror is the mirror with an outward bulging. You can see the picture here. It is bulged outside. Reflecting surface is called convex mirror. Sorry, I'll just keep it. Yeah. So if you see the concave mirror, it will be uh, bent inside, inward. Mirror with an inward bulging. Reflecting surface is known as concave mirror. It will be bent inside. And convex mirror will be bulged outside. So this is the difference between these two. I'll even show you the video for concave and convex mirror but before that I'll I just will explain you a little bit after that we'll have a, a view on the uh, we'll just watch a video for this so coming to the uh, the properties how the mirror will act like how the mirror uh, actually is the center of a mirror is called its pole P it will be mentioned as P the center of the sphere of which the mirror forms a part is called the center of curvature. If you see here, so this is called as the center of curvature. The middle of the point is called as center of curvature is mentioned as C and the point where it is being mentioned as its pole. The line which is being drawn is called as its pole. If you can see the picture, the center of the mirror is called as its pole. The mirror where you can see, here is a mirror. I just uh, will draw this so that it will be clear to you. Yes, this is a mirror. If you can see here, it is a mirror. Yes. So here, the center of it is called as P. You can see it. The center of it is called as P, the center of the mirror, bulged part. The bulged part of a concave mirror. So here the center of it is called as P. Center of curvature is mentioned as C. The radius of the sphere of which the mirror forms a part is called as its radius of curvature. Here you can see the radius of curvature the point, the center of curvature, and the point where the pole, it is called as the radius of curvature. Yes, Nehita, you have any doubt? Ma'am, I'm not understanding. Okay, okay, I'll repeat once again. I'll just erase it. Okay. Yes, if you see this, the center of a mirror. So this is a mirror children. Here you can see this is a mirror. It is bulged outside. It is bulged outside. What sort of mirror it is? If it is bulged outside, what sort of mirror it is? Convex mirror. It is? Convex mirror. Convex mirror. Yes, it is convex. convex so here right if you see, this is the center of curvature. And Ma here, can you hear this, me? Yes, I can. So if you see this mirror, the center, where is its center? The center is here. So this is called as P, the pole. It is called as a pole. Center of the mirror is called as its pole. So this is the mirror. It is the center of the mirror. It is called as pole of the mirror. 
and the center of the sphere of which the mirror forms a part is called the center of curvature so this is the center of the curvature so this is the circle of which the sphere the sphere is being formed the center of the sphere of which the mirror forms a part this is the sphere and where is the center for the sphere here is the center in the middle so this center of the sphere is called as center of curvature so this is a curve this is the center of the curvature and when we talk about just once again the radius from where we can get the radius by measuring these two just once again i'll just tell you where how we can get this radius of curvature when we are drawing this curve curve is nothing but this this is the curve when we are taking the radius we are measuring it with by putting a scale here we are measuring the center of curvature and we are measuring this one the center of the pole here when we are measuring so when we measure these two we will get the radius of curvature the radius of curvature is nothing but the radius of sphere of which the mirror forms a part is called the radius of curvature you can underline these points in your course book children if you do not have the course book it's okay i'll send you the this ppt okay the line passing through the center of curvature of a mirror and the pole is called as as its principal axis here you can see it has been mentioned this line is called as principal axis and even it's the same thing for a convex mirror also you can see the same thing in this convex mirror also here at the left side of your picture you can see this for the same thing is there for a convex mirror also i hope you all have understood the principal focus is the middle line which has been passing through the center of curvature and the pole it is called as a principal axis ma'am the mirror is formed as a sphere shape ma'am yes it's a sphere shape usually it's uh, the sphere is been assumed it's been for measuring sake we are just assuming it but the mirror will be only like this it's been bent like this or it's been bulged like this it's been inverted like this and it's been kept like this usually when you see uh, the ambulance or the car which you are driving the mirrors will be there at the side so the mirrors will not be round like this the mirrors will not be like this it will be like this it will be covered with something and outside we we can see the bulge part for a car isn't it the car mirrors usually when you see two mirrors will be there for focusing for seeing the traffic the cars which are coming from behind the bikes which are coming from behind you can see them with those mirrors so these will be the mirrors which will be used usually in the cars or the bikes which we drive are they round are they spherical no they shape will be like this they shape will be somewhat bulged why the shape will be bulged i'll explain it to you i'll show you the video in which you can see why the mirrors will be of these shapes i'll share the video just give me nitika you can join again if you can't see the screen Yeah, I hope you can Smart hear now. Smart learning for all. Topic convex. You can hear it? Now I have paused it. Please inform me if you can't hear it. Okay. Kundana also wants to join again I think. Kundana and Smitika I'm waiting for you. I'll play it if you join fast.
Okay, Kundana has joined it since. And where is Nitika? Okay, I'll play it. Convex mirror. Why is a <laughs> convex mirror used as a rear view mirror? Mm. <sighs> Wow, what an amazing car. <laughs> but your rear view mirror is missing. Huh? <laughs> <sighs> no, don't use a mm. concave mirror. Ah. We usually show you magnified images. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you listen to me? Mm -hmm. Huh? Ah! See, I was correct. Mm. Now put the convex mirror and see the result. Mm. Oh. Look, the image is much smaller, <laughs> right? Mm. Do you know what the difference between the two mirrors was? Mm. If we use a concave mirror for our car, we will not be able to see the vehicles behind us properly. Mm. This is because the concave mirror will magnify the object and we will see a very enlarged image. Thus, we require a mirror which gives us a wider view of the vehicles behind us. In this case, a convex mirror proves to be the right choice. <laughs> this is because a convex mirror forms a highly diminished image, thus making the traffic look much smaller. As a result, we can see a large number of vehicles in a very small mirror. For more educational videos, please visit www.smart.com. I hope you all can see it. Yes, ma'am, we can see that. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am, we can see. see. Yes, ma'am. Concave mirror. <laughs> mirror. Why is your reflection upside down on a spoon? Hmm. Wow. Ah. Looks like you're getting ready to go for a party. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't huh? you stand here and then look oh. into the spoon? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Don't worry, your image appeared upside down because of the huh? inward curve of the spoon. The surface of huh? the spoon which is curved inwards huh? acts like a concave mirror. Huh? You look confused. Huh? Mm. Let me explain. <laughs> a concave mirror is a mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards. Mm. Being curved huh? inwards, it reflects or bounces back the light rays in a different manner. Oh. When you see yourself in a spoon, which is like a concave mirror, the light rays from your face <laughs> fall on the top of the spoon and get reflected oh. downwards. While the huh? light rays from your feet fall on the bottom of the spoon and you get reflected upwards. As huh? a result, you see yourself upside down. Hmm. Now, the point where all these light rays <laughs> meet is called the focal point. When you stand beyond huh? this point, only then will you be able to see an inverted image of oh. yourself. However, if you stand before the focal point, the image will look upright. Ma'am, the video is not clear, ma'am. It's not. Topic. Yes. Yeah, ma'am, the video is far. Video is not clear, ma'am. It's. Audio.